Warning, damaging debris may be in your system. Hi! Flush your flush before first use and any system maintenance. Always good advice when you're uh, when you're building a launcher of any sort. So I have to tell the chat that the stream was down for like all of a minute when you've put that thing in your mouth. <laughs> it's it's true. I was trying to blow through it and I was unsuccessful. Uh, we'll, we'll figure it out when we've got 23 volts to put in it. Uh, so yeah, I think what we're going to do is we're going to start building this sucker up. And for that, uh, we're just going to want to give these pieces of pipe a little wipe down. Maybe remove the stickers first of all. So let's get that done. Uh, Corey? If Corey wants to relay any questions, you guys Yeah, chat know. demands that you recreate the event. You recreate the event. So there's a manual uh, operation on this, this valve. So you twist it in the open direction. And nothing. Um, which way is the direction? Which, which way is in? Flow this way, okay. Nope, nothing. Hmm. Nothing from the bleed hole either. Okay, well, you know what? We'll, we'll maybe it needs a certain amount of pressure to, to engage, like 15 or so. It does mention on the box that it takes between 15 and 150 pounds per square inch, and I don't know how hard I'm blowing into that thing. I haven't calibrated my, uh, my mouth. I haven't calibrated my mouth yet. That's a phrase that I've said. Okay, let's uh, peel these labels off and get things nice and Can clean. Can you explain bleed hole? <laughs> <laughs> Can I explain bleed hole? Yes. This here is, uh, is, is a bleed valve, so that if there is w air or water that you need to remove from the, the, the system, uh, you can. It just comes out without open, going into the rest of the valve. I hope that was a... <laughs> Satisfactory explanation. Ah, uh, okay. So I'm peeling off these stickers, and boy, oh boy, will I be very happy when the rest of the industry settles on a a, a low or a, a low sticky adhesive for more products. God, there's nothing I hate more than an unsatisfying label that you got to peel off in the worst way. Ugh. Yep, this is going to be the way it is for each one of these. Don't we have some like Goo Gone or Windex? Well, Goo Gone and Windex won't really help in this respect. I mean, the Windex is going to be there for getting most of the dust off after the fact. But. Yes, Windex. You know. For dusting. It's, it's, it's a lubricant with, uh, with, with, with ammonia, D. It's a, it, no, it's, it's, it's a good cleaner. It uh, leaves no streaks behind. I like it. I'm pretty sure it doesn't interact with the glue we're using. Pretty sure. If anyone wants to check that out, today we'll be using OT Premium Grade Yellow ABS Cement. The premier choice, according to the French on the label. So let's very carefully... See, even this one, I, I'm carefully enough trying to peel it and it just tears. Ugh. The worst. So some people have asked, uh, in, I noticed, why I'm building a t-shirt cannon. And I've always wanted to have one of these. But I've never uh, had the opportunity or time to make it. Um, all told, I didn't do much comparison shopping or shopping around for stuff, but so far I've put about a hundred dollars Canadian into this. Now we're going to be left with some leftover pipe, which can be used for a second one if we so desired to do this project again. Uh, the valve is probably the single most expensive piece at, uh, we're looking at $30 for that. You know, prices may vary in your area. Um, I guess, really, I only need to take the labels off pieces that will be in contact with other pieces. So that means this, 
this one and does this one come from the side? It does. Boo. Okay. Now let's just let's decide which end we want to use as our end. This one's kind of hacky already, so yeah, we'll use it. Um, give it a spray. Out of my dusting cloth. And give it a wipe. And because we're using a, uh, it's not, not a glue, but a cement, um, we don't need to worry too much about roughing up the, uh, roughing up the edges because they'll end up just dissolving into one another, hopefully. But that should be clean enough for that. We don't need to clean the whole thing. We can do that with a nice... When we're done, we'll just stand this guy up here for now. Stay. Good. Thank you. And let's do the same with this guy. Maybe this one we can do the whole thing. Just cleaning my pipes. Let's see here. Made in Canada by Ipex Inc. There may be other sources of ABS pipe, but we don't have them. Fun fact that I wasn't aware of when I was uh, buying the pipe. Uh, I was all concerned, like, this doesn't have a sticker on it, so it's going to be hard to take through the cash register. So I had to get and stand in line with an actual person. Turns out, the barcode's printed right there on the pipe. IPC. Yeah, you know me. Okay. Let's um, continue with the peeling. <laughs> Just enough to get the finger underneath. Okay, so as you can see, we've got a good start going there. When will it fail? The, answer's, the answer may surprise you. So close. One time, one time. Come on. Don't let me down, Bruce. Don't let me down. Oh, come on. For f uh, that, see, the worst. Pieces are terrible. Okay, Let's put it back there. And I'm gonna be. Can I get? If I can get one, if I can get one, it would be just magical. Hmm. Oh yeah. This is the content you turn in for, tune in for, right? Yep. Come on. This one feels good, Ian. Yeah, I feel. It like looks it. very clean underneath. I feel like it's gonna be good. Don't rush it. Don't rush it. There we go. That's one. That's one decent one. Um, let's see. Someone asked if there was a, a microphone for ASMR. Sadly, these are very quiet stickers. Like the adhesive has a real oily feel to it. See, I like loud stickers. Oh yeah, the loud ones usually mean that the, the, the glue sticks to itself nicely, but not to the plastic that it's sticking to. Or that the label itself. I was is being plastic. facetious. <laughs> I I wasn't actually. I really prefer loud stickers. It, it, really, to be honest, I just prefer it if we'd stop using paper for labels. 
that's half the problem. See, I hate foil stickers. They're the worst. Ooh, yeah, no, they are. They are also bad. Ah, uh, just a tiny little corner. I think, yeah, I think we managed to get a total of one done properly. Okay. I'm just going to take this one off just because I feel like it now. Yeah, so I mean, uh, for, for the cost that I put into it, that kind of explains to me why I was never... It gives me an in, one of the reasons why I was never allowed to have one as a tri, or try building one as a teen. But I mean, I lived, grew up on an acreage uh, far outside of the city, so I mean, having a cannon would have been pretty clutch at that age and in that area. I turn toward the camera just so you can see that one little piece where it's fouled up. <laughs> just abort. It's it's all gone. Start from the other end. No, no, I can do it. Nope, I can't do it. Yeah, this one is just F it. There we go. I mean, we could... I'm very curious to see what we could stuff into the barrel of this and, and shoot out. What do you like Alex's uh, grenade launcher 2.0? You could get like a, a reasonable sized stoat in there. Yeah. Oh man, you could get a really good sized rodent in there. Hello everyone. <clears throat> nope. But maybe try the big one. I want to hear what the big one sounds like. Well, hold on a second. I'm just going to put these together because I think I can didgeridoo this. That's how you know that the kangaroos are coming by. <laughs> okay, so seriously, <laughs> this is uh, this is a lot of fun, but. Uh, yeah, there's... Can you do the big one? Oh, Can you step no, down you the big know, one? You know that we're doing the big one now. After that, there's no chance this isn't getting done. Okay, so this means we have to do kind of a test fitting, which I guess is a good idea anyway. Okay, get that. Oh, yeah. All right, and then this. Oh, Ian, do you have one of your kazoos here? Uh, yes, I do. It's in the editing office. Can we play it down the giant tube? <laughs> the reverb is amazing. Well, that was fun. How far can we take this? How, how ridiculous do you think we can get here? Oh, I can't. Well, I mean, if we could. Oh, yeah, we could connect it all the way together. No, we couldn't. Damn it. Oh, well. It was worth a try. We failed. But that was fun. That's, sometimes it's nice to have fun. We have fun here sometimes at Loading Ready Run. You do you. Oh, there's another sticker. 
Where? On the big tube. Uh, not on the not, not, not the full tube. The the oh yeah. on the uh, oh, on the uh, the coupler. Yeah, I guess we can take that off too. I should really just bring in my didgeridoo for a loading ready live sometime. I mean, okay, I guess we could stop calling it a t-shirt cannon and just call it a uh, an air cannon. I've also read that things uh, work a little bit better when you use a sabo on these. So, there's going to be plenty of experimentation in future. Uh, Uh, fine. All right, let's start. Uh, let's start doing some glue. Doing some gluing. Doing some glue. Ian, um, question from the chat: Can you do the circular breathing necessary for all the didgeridooing? You know, I've never really learned the circular breathing thing. Um, and I think I hate calling it circular breathing because it's. More cheaty than that. Yeah, like I, I, I've, I always thought it was something a little bit more difficult, but apparently it's just pushing out with your with your cheeks while you breathe in through your nose. And yep. Again, that's something I've never really gotten uh, figured out. But for something like this, like the the space is so big, you're pushing out so much air that it would be very difficult to circular breathe that. Uh, my actual didgeridoo has a much smaller uh, aperture, so it'd probably be easier to do it that way. Hey. Let's um, start with the adhesives. This today's adhesive is, as I said, Oatly Premium Grade Yellow ABS Cement, which handily comes with its own applicator sponge. Ew. Yeah, this, this is kind of disgusting. I'm, uh, I'm I'm looking forward to this. They suggest wearing some gloves, and I am going to do that. Because that does not smell good. Um, we may also want to open a window. Because who oh boy does that have some, some stench to it. Ooh, well that's good. Uh, let's see here. What does it contain? It contains methyl ethyl ketone, ABS resin, acetone. Do not smoke. Do not swallow. Do not get it. I wonder when it says do not smoke, does that mean like you're not supposed to smoke while using it or that you're not supposed to smoke specifically it? Yes. Do not get in eyes, on skin or clothing. Do not breathe fumes. Keep out of reach of children. Use only in a well-ventilated area. Da, 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 da. Impervious gloves. Keep away from flames such as pilot lights and any objects that sparks such as an electric motor. Okay. Please focus on getting your hand inside. <laughs> We are coated. Okay, so just to make sure we're doing this right, this goes in here, this one goes in here, and then in here. I guess suppose we could do the small parts first. Let's do the smallest part first. I'm uh, gonna lay down a bag just to avoid possible splashes or drips. Alrighty, no turning back now. Uh, I've also brought in a mallet and a uh, pad to, do, to give some calibrated taps because I don't have my soft mallet. Alright, here we go. Um, you know what, let's paint the inside of this rather than painting the, uh, the outside of the other thing. So just get a good glop on. The man at the store said that it didn't really matter too much. Just 
just as long as you, oh yeah, so the, the brush you can, yeah, you probably missed it, was already getting black from the uh, dissolving PVC, or ABS rather, I'm sorry. Okay, well that goes in good and smooth. And there's a little bit of uh, splotch there on the inside. It wasn't that clean, but that won't affect, or it shouldn't affect, the uh, the performance of the device itself. Um, right, well, I guess we're not taking that off of the, uh, the plastic while we do this. And let's go from big to small. Set that down there. Let's use a little bit less this time. Let's uh, try and keep it contained. Woo! And that goes there. Okay. That one's in. Uh, oof, do not breathe that in. What kind of gloves are those? I don't know. Someone's asking the question, is, are these gloves that might react with acetone, aren't they? Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to touch the solvent then. There we go. So that steps down quite nicely. Um, let's give it a couple taps though, just to make sure it's in there good and tight. Good old Geek Squad. Yep. You Is that my mouse pad, by the way? This no, this was probably my mouse pad. We we, we have many. We had many of these. Then I got rid of a bunch of them. Okay. Whew. That's gonna be a fun one. Um, I guess we might as well adhere it to the inside of the coupler too, because that's what we're gonna need to do. This is, uh, this is actually rolling along quite quickly. Will the gloves melt onto Ian's flesh? God willing, the answer is no. I didn't check the straw poll. Was that one of the options? Did someone predict this? <laughs> the, the gloves smelting? S smelting to your hands? Well, I mean, the, the adhesive's not doing anything to the plastic bag, so... Uh, it's only a little bubbling going on. Not doing anything and a little bubbling are very different things. I think it's honestly not doing anything. Ian? Yes? What is it doing? Nothing. Ooh, there's a lot of space here on the inside of this one. I'm going to do... Don't think you need to go down all the way, do you? Uh, probably not, but I'm going to. And I'm going to do it... On both Why? sides. Whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> okay, good. And in you go. Good. Good seal there. And then because we've already been working on this one, it's full of geeky. Oh, smell. Yeah. It's pleasant, isn't it? It's pungent. Mm -hmm. Nice liberal applique. Ugh. Got a nostril full there. Okay, and then we'll attach that to the top of this. Okay. Well, we're, uh, we're committed. We're no, commi no, you took it away, you monster. <laughs> hey guys, this is a, uh, this is an angle, do we need to get closer? Yeah, there, there's a focus point. Hey gang, this is an angle you don't normally get to see here on Tinker Taylor Solder Fry. We're up real high, and it's not just because of the glue fumes. All right, um, it's geez, because that's, of the glue fumes. that did not take long at all. Are we done? What's the drill for? Um, oh no, we're not done at all. 
Uh, let's see here. Boom, 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 boom. Shall we just uh, get that right on the end here as well? Why not? Let's do all our gluing at once. Have you measured anything? Do you need to cut stuff? I do need to cut things. But thankfully it's cuts that can occur after the gluing has occurred. Dear the chat, the window is cracked quite a yep. bit. There's, oh, yeah. there's a good breeze. It's very cold in here now. Pleasant. All right. There we go. That's on. That's our barrel. It's extended now. Completely non-rifled. Uh, and um, I think, yeah, we have one more piece that we'll need to adhere at the end, and that's the, the cap. But for now, we can just fold this up. Hide our shame. And uh, put that in a safe space over there. I'm going to inspect that bag. <laughs> Don't get it on your hands. How would I get the bag on my hands if nothing was happening to the bag? <laughs> I'm concerned for Corey. Ew. Yeah, we're not. It's we're, like the bag is sweating. Full, fully non rifled. We'll just go smooth bore on this one. I will not be didgeridoo doing this now. While there is still uh, fresh, fresh premium grade ABS cement. All right, what? How long do we have to do this? Store below. Keep container closed. I should have maybe replace if jellied. Okay, that's good. What does jellied look like? I don't know. Is it yellow and slimy? I, I, I guess it looks like yellow a, and if slimy. It's a, I guess if it's a jelly. Like jello? Yeah. Do not check dry fit and fitting. Pipe should go easily a third of the way in. Make sure applicator is at least half the size of the pipe diameter. Are you just reading the glue to kill time? No, no, I'm, I'm just now realizing I probably should have read this beforehand. I've never worked with this before, but hey, we're, we're learning things. Um, wow, what? Pipe and fitting should be clean. Good, got there. Apply a thin coat of cement to the fitting. Avoid pudding. Just in general? Pudding or jelly, they need to like Yeah, be these clear. guys are really hungry. Uh, cover entire socket surface. Good, got there. Apply liberal coat of cement to the pipe and to the depth of the socket. Leave no void. Assemble parts quickly! Exclamation point. Cement must be fluid. If not, recoat both parts. Push pipe fully into fitting using a quarter turning motion until pipe bottoms out. Hold pipe and fitting together for 30 seconds. Wipe off excess. Joints should be should not be disturbed until they have cured sufficiently to withstand handling. Do not pressure test until cement is fully cured. Do not test with air. Clean tools with Oatly Cleaner. And then the, the VOC information. So, what's the curing time? This is mainly the question I was, I was trying to ask there. Um, contents may catch fire, contents may be harmful. Okay, well, we're just going to be letting this go uh, for like two weeks, is what it comes down to. Hello. What, what, what did we find there? Corey? Hmm? What? Hey, how, how's it going, everyone? Okay. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Where do we go from here? The internet says it takes 15 minutes to cure. I don't believe it. All right, the next thing we need to do uh, is one other piece of equipment. This was slightly harder for me to find, but thankfully the, uh, the Manic Canadian Tire was quite helpful. 
uh, you need to get a valve for your uh, for your system with which to fill it. And there's a couple different types of valves that you can use. There's the Schrader valve and the other kind. Um, I don't remember what they are, but uh, we're going to use, I think this one is the Schrader, is what it's called? Let's find out. Cool, I can use my phone through the glove. Ah yes, the Presta valve, which is this kind, which is the kind that is fully threaded. And then the uh, Schrader, which is your standard style valve. Uh, the reason I, that they suggest using the, uh, the Presta style valve is that it's threaded all the way down, which means we can use it to get a better seal. And then you can just use the, uh, this adapter on top to, to fill it with a normal bike pump or other style of air pressure pump. Um, so yeah, we're going to have to, you know, it looks like it's already failed at the base here, which is kind of what we want. So we're just going to get it out of that tube. I'm guessing with just, uh, roll it out. Thus we, boop, there we go. Tube gone. And, uh, here's our valve. So what the instructions suggest doing is drilling a hole slightly less than the uh, slightly less full or less wide than the width of the valve itself. That makes sense. I think I'm going to do it, I was thinking of doing it in the end cap because that way we could just replace the cap if there's if something goes wrong. This also just does feel like it's fairly significant compared to the, uh, the pipe itself. What do you think, Corey? Do we want to uh, go center back Center? For the valve? Sure. Okay. Which means drilling time. Which means, uh... We gotta find out which bit we want to use. Let's have a look through Corey's bits. And then we'll drill a pilot hole. So just eyeballing it here, it looks like this is the size we might want to use. Maybe it's a bit too small. Kind of one size up. Have a look. Compare. Okay, I think this is the size we want to use, which is 7 30 seconds of an inch. Oh, Imperial, you and your wacky measurements. Right, pilot hole. Let's go with the small hole here. Uh, how do we want to mark this? Do we want to just eyeball it or do we want to do some measurementation? What do we feel like here? They're still fixating on the bits comment. Skyboss96 says eyeball it. Go for it. YOLO. Wild Peaks, YOLO, eyeball it. Yeah, okay. you're fine. This is what, well, this is what we're doing it. This is what we're doing. They're also debating whether or not we're married or common law or weird or all of the above. Or weird? Are they married, common law, or just weird? I mean, we do have to file our taxes together. It's true. The government won't let us not. Where did Ian go? Oh, no, his butt's still on camera. <laughs> Sorry, okay. chat. I thought that would be a fun surprise, but it was not. For for further YOLO activities, uh, we're going to be plug we're plugging in directly to where the uh, where the computer's plugged into. So that's fun. In you go. Just leave these gloves on for now. All right, I think we're, that looks about right to me. 
Do you want to move it back to where it's in focus? <laughs> Thank you. Still looks good. Here we go. Oh, wait. Which way? Which way is go hole? This drill is bad and not marked. Other way is go hole. Mm, nice and clean. Crisp and clean and no caffeine. All right. And next up, the, the maxi hole. Question from the chat. Yes. Uh, will the pressure cylinder be at risk of launching if the valve is in the end cap over the body, if the seal fails rather than ejecting the cap only? One more time? Is it going to knock the little pin out, or is it going to blast the cap off? It'll probably blow the pin out. Like the pins, the uh, this is this is right now is the weakest point in the whole thing, which is I think why it's uh, why we want to use a threaded version because the cap is going to be uh, welded onto the end of the pressure vessel as well. So I mean, if it, if if that part if if the welding fails, then that's the part that'll blow. If this isn't in there well enough, then. It's the part that will blow. I'm just going to double check what they suggest to make the uh... before you can't. Okay. Install the pressure valve in the tank. Turn to the open end of the tank and drill a hole it's just smaller than the press valve. Cut the press valve out of the bin tube so it's one inch of extra material around the valve stem. We couldn't do that because it was already the valve stem was already broken on it. Um, screw the press valve into the on the tank so it sticks out of the inside, and then seal the end of the press. Hmm. So there's no there's no information on how to seal it. So we'll probably end up using some silicone caulk or something like that. Which means I don't think we're going to be sealing this tonight. Which is fine. Let's drill the hole though. That needs to be tighter. Alrighty then, get back in that hole. That needs to be tighter still. <laughs> tighter still. making a very interesting cut. Let's pull that out, twist that a bit. All right. Yank some of that off there, the excess. Okay, we should try to get back in there now. There we go. That's a nice clean hole. So let's try screwing it through. Oh yes. Yeah, that's gonna self tap itself quite nicely. Once I get it in there.
and get enough leverage to start turning it. Hmm. That's going to be the tough part. Maybe I'll just use the other gloves so I can get a good handle on it. Ew. D double gloving? Ew. Corey doesn't so much like the double glo glove. There we go. Do I have PTFE tape in? I'm not sure. What kind of tape is that? Is that the, uh, that, is that the Teflon tape? No idea. Yeah. I'll wait for Anarin to uh, get back to me there. Ian, are you planning to use more of the cement or an epoxy to help with the seal? Uh, Lynx, I'm probably going to use an epoxy of some sort. Oh, Teflon tape, yeah. Yeah, I do have some Teflon tape with me. Um, probably not a bad idea to add that once we get the, uh, the tap in there, which I think feels real good. Like that, honestly, that could be enough. Okay, now nothing's turning now. Mm. Grunties. Ugh. Okay. So we didn't quite get the tap all the way through, which is annoying. I might have to get some needle nose pliers for that. But it started, and that's what counts. Whew. Maybe just if I go with some momentum. <sighs> nope, I think I'm going to need the. Uh, pliers. Oh, whew. Fingers just not strong enough. Keep good. <laughs> uh. <laughs> and people are asking for more reasoning behind the, uh, the cannon. There is no reasoning. It just is. Um, okay. I think it's actually time for us to take a quick break here because I need to get some more tools and uh, clean up some of the stuff. And so we're going to take a short break and we'll see you on the other side. Enjoy. Welcome back to Tinker Tailor Solder Fry, the Let's Try program here on the Mighty Loading Ready Run Video Entertainment Network. My name is Ian Horner and we are continuing on with our construction of a t-shirt cannon. Um, yeah, when last we left you, we were just putting our valve, uh, the mighty Schrader valve, into the back end of our pipe. Uh, and I remembered, or someone in the chat asked me if I had silicone tape on me. Turns out, actually, I do. It was on my shopping list to purchase because I, uh, I use it uh, in home brewing to secure some of the uh, the uh, fermentation tanks I use, uh, the joints, and I had just run out, and so it was uh, it was at the Canadian Tire when I needed it, so I grabbed some, and it turns out it's going to be useful today. Uh, what we're also going to do is test out the uh, the solenoid, and to do that I've got my trusty well. This isn't uh, one, but I made one because I like to have these around. My trusty uh, wall adapter to bare wire uh, machine of extreme danger. Ian, because you like to have one? I, they're very useful to have around, Corey, when you need to introduce power into something. Don't worry, we'll be safe with the... We'll use morettes to, uh, to make sure that everything's nice and safe, but... It's always good to have a cord around that just goes right from the wall to what you want to have fun with. There we go. All righty then. And 
And we wanted the needle nose players too. <laughs> Everyone's having such a good time. Okay, what's the voltage on the valve? The valve requires... What does it want? Actually, yeah, that's a good point. I should double check that. Uh, 24 volts alternating current at 50 to 60 hertz. Probably too high, actually, now that I think about it, for uh, going directly into the wall. So let's not do that. Thanks, Corey. Thanks, chat. But it's still handy to have these things around. I'll just uh, do up the ends. I've got one at home. I haven't brought it in to, uh, to work here because they're useful. Very so there's two of these in our life. Oh yeah, yeah this one's staying here. We will not give it to Penelope P to play with. Or B. Oh or my god, Penelope is in here all the time. <laughs> there we go. Now it's perfectly safe. Ooh, maybe not. Uh... The wall is 120, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, in Canada, one... Shoot, I can never remember if it's 110 in Japan or 120 in Japan and 110 here. I think it's 110 in Japan because people complain about batteries not charging. The other problem with Japan is that they, they, they have two different power standards in the country. Like, they have both 110 and 120. And it's infuriating. Okay, let's actually screw it all the way through so that we can get that thread the way we like it. Oh, yeah, here it comes. Breached! Nice. Nice. Oh, that's a nice thread job. Okay, now to take it out. Ah! the threading tape I think that's going to be a good investment in our time uh, what do you think five rotations what are you asking uh, how many times how around? many times do you yeah. unwrap the thing sure Started. The thread is not coming along for uh, the ride through the Okay, there's a little bit coming through. I'm willing to bet if we bulk that up with uh, some epoxy too, that would be even better. Oh yeah, that's a good seal. And it doesn't stick out too much, which is nice. They were suggesting an inch out. I think that's that's overkill. I think this this little bit here is enough, and then we can just actually cover that over with a little rubber nut, nubbin protector. Do we have a little rubber nubbin? Oh, uh, we don't, but we can. I'm sure we can buy one or find one. 
that's that looks real good. I'm going to uh, hmm. We're gonna to want to seal that before we close this whole thing up anyway. Which means, do we have any sort of a sealer here that we can use? You mean like epoxy? Yeah. Um. Or even just the silicone, to be honest, would be. There might be a caulking gun in the prop room. I think there. I'll go check. Yeah. It, it might be in the. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Maybe I just won't seal up this cap today, just to be uh, just to be sure of it. <laughs> Gray rabbits is duct tape. Uh, <laughs> uh, Dogma, I don't know that. We, like I said, I don't know that we have the epoxy here. But uh, I feel I, 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 I feel I just feel good about this. I mean, even if it does leak a little, it's not. We're, we're, <laughs> You're not going to be storing a lot of your, uh, you're not going to be storing your air waiting for the shot. You're probably going to be shooting it off pretty quickly after you've pressurized it. I would hope. All right, let's put away our, some of our tools here. Corey's going to come back with our epoxy. Uh, wait, 15 minutes, they say. Wait, that, that looks good. That looks real good. Any luck? Nope. Okay, that's something we can think about later. All right. So, while we've got this uh, set up as is, why don't we do a uh, test fitting of the, the metal bits, just to get a, get a good idea of what this whole thing is going to look like here. It's going to look like a tube. You look like a tube. I do look like a tube. I mean, we're, we're all tubes of flesh. Our topology is very similar. Flesh tubes, top to bottom, but human beings don't have a solenoid. Instead of solenoids, humans have sphincters. Do, 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 do. A solenoid is really different from a sphincter. I like they're they're they're, they're actual they're self-actualizing valves. <sighs> well, the solenoid isn't the valve, I guess. Exactly. The, the, the solenoid is. I yeah, know they're pretty close because the solenoid is the muscle that controls the valve, whereas the sphincter is a muscle that is a valve. So. <sighs> I guess you could say that sol that uh, that sphincters are nature's solenoid valves. No, just valve. Why do you have to have solenoid in there? I just like I, I like. Is it wrong that I like saying the word solenoid? No, that's not the issue here. Ooh, that looks good. So I'm wondering the. Really honestly, I'm wondering if I should uh, try and find the balance point and mount the handle there or should I mount the handle to the bottom of this uh, uh wait till you get a t-shirt in it assembly it's a good point you want you definitely want to check your balance when you've got when it's loaded well that's good so far and uh that's too big to mount up boy that looks good so at this point um we're we're kind of waiting for uh Kathleen to show up with a saw. And do you a, do you think she remembers? Could could you could you? Uh, you want me to text Kathleen? Yeah, just just find ask, out if she's alive. Just ask her if she remembers. If not, it's fine. If so, then we can wait. I'll just I'll uh, answer some questions from the chat here. Check your. Oh my God, Ian! You should turn it into a shoe launcher. Says sketchy details. All you need is a sabot. Turns out, uh, in my research on cannons, uh, you probably want to be making a sabot anyway. I'm just gonna get that really Kirby style. That's some, that is some good for shortening. Mm. What's, what looks best there? Yes, that's the, that's the angle we want. Uh, this, the seg, uh, sorry I'm late, what are you making? I am making a t-shirt cannon, and it's uh, good. Uh, Transcast, I have not thought about putting a Picatinny rail on it. I am 
now interested in putting a ticket to any rail on it. Uh, teeth work because they have uh, teeth work. Saws work because they have metal teeth. Your mouth is full of real teeth. The solution is obvious. I need to glue my teeth to to a stick and make a saw. I mean, I, I do have trigger discipline at the moment. The, this technically is the trigger, and I, I connecting those wires together would do nothing. Um, I think what we're going to end up doing is um, probably for the electronics, I think we're going to go the route of putting three 9 volt batteries in series just to create uh, enough voltage. We may or may not step it down. I've been told that uh, these Solenoids are, have no problem handling the extra three volts that three nine volts would, uh, that twenty seven volts would do, but who knows? Well, we'll find out. Nice thing is we can, uh, because we're going with the metal, we we don't have to glue these connections together, so we could just swap out the uh, the valve if that ever became a problem. Or or alternatively. Now that I'm thinking about it more, we could, uh, we could create different barrels for different situations, different sized pressure vessels. This is actually quite a, uh, quite a, a versatile system. Um, I'm going to need a pipe wrench though, because I probably want to connect this pipe up pretty well and get some, get some stuff on there, some more of that Teflon tape. Uh, Real Gamer Cow asks, aren't 9 volts uh, batteries DC? Yes, they are. Again, apparently uh, it works. D going DC works fine. I mean, what, 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 what is AC but just simply DC at a very fast rate? And opposite sometimes. Corey, you, you have something to add? I mean, do you got a split ring commutator? In your pants? Or I... are you just <laughs> making crap up about electricity? I mean, I'm not wrong, am I? Er, there we go. Very fast and sometimes in the wrong direction. Oh, no, 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 no not, not, not sometimes. 50% of the time in the wrong direction. 50% you say? Yes. It goes back and forth. It alternates, as is the name. Have you ever done this before? No, I've never done this before. That's why I just want to know with how you get your authority. That's like, why how can you be so confident? That's why it's, it's, it's a let's try I'm so program. jealous. Uh, and to be really honest, um, it's only moment. We, we only need the, the valve open momentarily. Just enough time to get the, all the air through very quickly. Again, I'm, I'm also trying to uh, maybe just justify what I've read. The evidence is out there that, uh, that it works. Uh, why? I might just end up blowing up this, uh, this valve. But I doubt it. I highly doubt it. Anyway. Uh, what else we got going on here? There's no saw. There, there is no saw? There is no saw. There is no saw coming. Not coming, yes. Okay. Well, um, if that's the case, let's try and experiment with the saw we've got. We've got all this extra pipe. Let's see if I can make a decent clean cut on the end that doesn't matter. And if that works, then we'll make an official cut where it does. After measuring twice, even. All right. So, let's use this wood saw. You know, we have nine, at least nine hammers in this moon base. Let's just make a nice starting cut. Now 
Why didn't I get the pipe pieces of pipe cut at the store? Thankfully because, or not thankfully, mainly because they didn't have, give me the option. <laughs> Seraphine asks, please move phone. There we go. Okay, so that's a, that's a nice, actually it's a good smooth cut. What a lovely noise you've discovered. Let the saw do the work. Yes. Yeah, just get your filthy crap all over the table and the floor. Oh, man. Thankfully, we have a vacuum, and I made sure to locate the vacuum before we started today's episode. Okay, I feel confident that I'm going to be able to saw through this. So we might as well get started uh, doing it right, because it's going to take a while. Ah, let's see here. Measurements. How big do we want this to be? We want the back end to be two feet long. What are people laughing at now? I'm just laughing at you. That's... Why, why is Corey laughing at Ian? <laughs> you know. Uh, just... The, the, the entire situation we, we find ourselves in as you drag a rusty wood saw across some PVC pipe. I thought you said it was ABS. It's, it's an exciting world we live in, isn't it? Alrighty then. So, from about halfway mark there, because that's, we want two full feet of good PVC. Uh, and that's where our mark is, right about there. So let's give it a notch. Okay. Notch has been... Let's give it a bit more of a notch. So hopefully that can serve as a Good cutting point for the saw. And let's begin. That seems straight. Okay, we're in. <laughs> Take a break there while I put the chat back. Move that out of the way. Okay. I thought you were taking a break because you were tired. Sorry? You I thought, thought you were taking a break because you were tired. No. So I should point out uh, to everyone that I've never taken a woodworking course. Hi everyone, welcome to Loading Ready Run. You want to go overhead too? About a third way there. I'm just gonna move 
that so I can still read you guys. So I know that there's some people out there who would like, who want the mic up close. Um, can you mute me for a second? Maybe, uh, maybe start, start low and then bring it up. that back on me. <laughs> there. That was fun. Did everyone enjoy that? I enjoyed that. Okay, we got some... I'm moving it over here so that the, uh, the, the bending of the pipe will help. Soon I'm also going to need to drop the end off too, so... Because I don't want to cut through the table. Maybe I should just move right to the end right now. After Corey's gone ahead and moved... No. Just turn the pipe. Sorry? Just turn the pipe. Oh! You're doing good work, Corey. This this shot is definitely going to make it into the uh, the the op op for season two. Maybe not that shot. How is the saw doing? Pretty good, all things considered. Wait, 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 no. Uh, saw right? It's all right. We're experiencing technical difficulties, Cat. I'm so sorry. And I'm fired. Wait, why is your phone dangling half off the table at the end of the pipe? The pipe that might move abruptly. Now it's on your lap. Now you're not even looking at what you're sawing. Home stretch, folks. Oh, we got some bindage. Only mildly hurts. We're fine. Hey, look, we did! And, you know, for freehanding that, I feel pretty good about that. Given this is the first time I've actually ever cut a uh, pipe, that seems uh, not, not half bad. Whew. All right, let's get that cleaned up, shall we? A 
for purposes of getting ready. Well, I mean, we're not going to glue it on right now. That's right. Remember? We're not going to glue it on until we can get some epoxy on the bottom of that thing. Oh, wow. I think I actually have, uh, I think I have ABS dust in my shoes. This is going to be a fun cleanup, guys. All right, let's give it a little wipe down. Yeah, it's maybe slightly diagonal. I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem, though. Like, the, the, the majority of the, the surface area that's going to be fusing with each other on these on that cap is going to be on the, the sides, not the edge, so... As long as the sides are clean and give a good a good seal, I think we're fine. Let's just do a quick test fit of that, though. Oh, that looks good. I am pleased with that. Well, we might as well do the, uh, do it up on the other side then as well, I guess. Finish the job. Finish it. Let's put that down there. Okay. Uh, how much space do I want on the two inch? Three feet of two inch pipe. You might be right there. You might be close to there. I don't like gloves. <laughs> hey, three feet. Look at that. No cutting necessary. I'm a genius. <laughs> oh no. All right. Uh, well, I guess then let's. Uh... Yeah. Yeah, Dark Morford and uh, Arclight Dynamo, you're correct. We're going to epoxy the, the valve in place and cement the cap. And then, and then we, uh, yeah, we'll... Then we'll see what it's like uh, pressure-wise later. But, I don't know, let's do a test assembly. Now that it's all together, or it can be all together. I have an idea what that thing looks like. I think you should just do a 15 minute didgery jam. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Something about the uh, the sealant doesn't like that. So you smelled it, said no, and then did it. Couldn't pass up an opportunity, Corey. It's called didgeridoo. Don't didgeridon't. Wow. Let's spin that in there. Chad, I'm kind of excited, to be honest. This is turning out to be a very successful project so far. At least it looks cool. I mean, if it completely fires and... Again, thankfully, we because of the, the choices of uh, materials, we there's a much better chance that no one will involve, end up in the hospital. It's always the hope. I did realize, though, that by putting uh, by putting the cap or the, the nubbin on the end like this, we can't just use the... Uh... Excuse me, beard here in the mouth. We can't just sit, set it down and stand it up on end anymore. So let's... Uh, 
Come on. Get on there. Also, I'll just leave this as an exercise to the chat. I was going to do it before uh, the show today, but setup got in the way. Uh, if you'd like to measure... I, I'm curious about how much air is going to get shoved through this. So we're looking at two feet by four inches in diameter of a cylinder. We're going to get it up to uh, 40 p pounds per square inch. So if, yeah, if, if you guys want to do the math on that for me to find out how much air we're pushing through this. That you do the fun. math, Ian. Oh, no, because then you'll check my work and you'll be sad. <laughs> Come on. Area of a circle. What's area of a circle? Oh, pi r squared. Okay, so you know the radius. Yeah. Hold on. I, this, no, I, I am not a head math person. Do not you force me to do head math. an information phone. I know, but I'm busy holding this sweet ass. Wow. And then multiply it by the length of the tube. So I think, I think what we're going to do here, so that's what, well, I can't, yeah, I can't pie in my head. I mean, I, I could pie in my face, but that's a different thing as well. So, wow, this is, so far, it's almost perfectly balanced right about. Please do not let it swing up and hit the roof camera. Right there. Yeah, just on the inside of the, the uh, pressure chamber. So maybe we'll mount the uh, there and then maybe across. I don't think I want to put anything on the barrel because that might end up uh, causing it to get jam jacked around, but a secondary handle mounted to the top there, or maybe to the uh, the pipe, would be a good idea. What you gonna make a handle out of? Well, that's what the Nerf gun was for, Corey. We're gonna cannibalize a Nerf gun. Now the question is, I've got a couple weeks now between now and the next episode. Uh, I think I'll have to head down, down to Value Village and see if I can find something that's broken so I'm not A, destroying a good Nerf gun, and B, so that I'm not paying big money, but I also want a decent handle for that. <clears throat> the amount of extra air is 2.7 times the volume. Oh, 1.3 gallons, 0.17 cubic feet. Or 301.59 cubic inches. Good job, guys. Yeah, all meat pizza, it really does seem a little bit like a, uh, like a sniper rifle. I would really... I want to avoid having any part of the body next to this as much as possible. I wonder if there's a way I can reinforce that somehow. I'll look into that in the future. Duct tape. Duct tape is not a bad idea, but that could also hide problems underneath it that one might not see. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this so far. Um, Jade Warrior, Ian, do you have any plans for a site? I have a spare scope I can send. <laughs> um, you know what? I get the feeling this isn't probably going to have the best accuracy. Again, as, iron I, sights. as I mentioned, it, iron sights are probably not a bad idea. It's a smooth bore, so we're not going to be looking at very much accuracy in terms of... Uh, Add rifling. <laughs> I'm not sure that rifling to PVC is a good idea. <laughs> Make t-shirts spin. Take the t-shirts. Oh, from the gun. Yes. It's a common gun, pro a common air gun problem is the smooth bore. Yeah, that's, that's true. Um, <laughs> reverse creation says freeze the shirt so they, gri they grip said rifling. Yes, that was a good idea. I, that's not a good idea for the real world. Um, apparently though, using, uh, plastic wrapped t-shirts. The, the plastic axes are really good. Oh, I've been hit by one of those. <laughs> how, how, how was it? Uh, weighty. Mm. Had some, had some oomph. Okay. Well, I think, I think we're pretty much done with the, uh, with 
what we can do construction-wise today. Do you want to hear how the straw poll went? Yeah, please. All right. What injury is most likely to occur tonight on TTSF? Uh, I'm going to start from the bottom. Paul attempts to make a t-shirt generator for ammunition resulting in a fabric singularity. Okay. Ian decides to use gunpowder and all they find is singed fabric and a pair of glasses. Okay. Ian, just his torso. Yep. Ian misunderstands the concept and makes a cannon out of t-shirts. Ian gets small cut on hand, forever giving the cannon a taste for blood, which is what I voted for. <laughs> You're not allowed to vote. What? Why not? <laughs> when it passes 9 p.m. PST, LRR takes a moment to wish couldn't pick a username. Happy 32nd birthday. I don't think we're going to go till 9. I don't think so, but we'll wish you a happy birthday anyway. Couldn't pick a username. And the winner, Alex counters the t-shirt cannon with his newest construction, the Pantaloon Ballista, kicking off an apparel arms race. I could see that happening. Did you see that? Did I see that? Yeah, or did you, were you the one who moved the pointer across my screen over here? No. Okay, was there something that was flying over here? No. Okay, then everything's fine. We shouldn't breathe any more of the fumes. Hey, Chad, I'm gonna get right up close to you here for a second. He needs to be able to read. Yeah. Because, as is tradition, at the end of the show here at Living Ready, run on Tinker Taylor Solar Fry. We like to welcome those of you who subscribe via Patreon at patreon.com slash Run, and those of you who have re-upped your subscriptions here at twitch.tv slash Run. Corey, do you have our subscribers? Here comes Captain Cobalt for 26 months saying, woo. And has the Raider for 26 months saying, this sub is a tool. Welcome to Dusk Shine, who subscribed for 41 months saying, fire the cannon. Hopefully next time. Granite Fish has subscribed for 26 months saying, planning the worst case scenario is always a good idea. Penguino Rojo is a new subscriber. Welcome. And Chlik. Chicky for six months saying safety third. Pixelated Painter has subscribed for eight months saying excited to see the new Lure Store shipping cannon. Kappa. And Transgas has subscribed for five months saying four month hype. I'm confused. Texan, Texan Reverend has subscribed for 13 months. Thank you for coming back, Texan. Dr. McBoop has subscribed for four months. Thanks for the laughs. You're welcome. Roy Etham has subscribed for four months. TTSF, my favorite live show. Thank you. I really appreciate hearing that. Sir Blix has subscribed for 13 months. Welcome, Sir Blix, once again. Matt Andre for 29 months saying, well, this is a new and interesting way to deliver Lure merch available from store.loadingreadyrun.com. Lure Beach. Maybe, <coughs> if you're in the area. And Scrumble Time Go is a brand new subscriber. Welcome, Scrumble Time Go. P. Sheps, 24 for two months. <coughs> Thank you, P. Sheps. Lethal Rose has subscribed for five months, saying... And completely is Lure Sub for four months, saying, Ian, your goddamn madman never change. Here's hoping. Chroma has subscribed for eight months. Thwomp. And In Volume has subscribed for eight months as well. Thank you, In Volume. <coughs> Johnny Kefka is here for 45 months, saying, Visiting your city on our honeymoon. How do you get anything done in a city that's so ridiculously scenic? We don't go outdoors. <laughs> yeah, we're in here. Havoc 4, for 41 months, I have taken control of this flesh vessel. I hope it's okay. The Angels Weep subscribed for 16 months, saying this went, well, not disastrously. <laughs> we still have time. Mr. Prototype has subscribed for three months, saying who needs video game footage when you have a stream that features Crokinole and Handsaw ASMR? Yeah, good stuff. And we'd like to thank you all for the 700 bits, particularly... Vegas Term 6108 Going Underscore Medium Transcast Juniper P1 P Sheps 24 Earthen None Earthen One and KV1 and N4 or Kavina. Thank you so much for those bits. The bits, the bits, the bits. So that's it for today's episode. Um, do we have that fancy new scene here? It should say upcoming. It's not a scene. Okay. Then we don't.
Uh, but uh, yeah, coming up next will be tomorrow's stream, which will be New Day Tuesday, which is, I don't know, but you can hashtag hit, hit bang, 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 one bang, bang next in the chat, and that'll tell you what's up. Also, the schedule's up on, uh, on loadingreadyrun.com slash live. You can check it out there. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. It's been a pleasure to be with you this week and every week. Uh, I look forward to two weeks' time from now when we can get this thing finished and hopefully firing. So, for tonight, thanks for watching. Ever forward, never learning. The next game is Strafe and the cannon is not bending. Good night, everyone. <laughs>